Let's review what was happening in the syrup swap lab. You tossed two coins and you got from that choice uh, one of four possible circuits. And here they all are. They're all very similar, but there are slight differences between them. Before we get to thinking about them, let's get the key idea behind all of these circuits into our heads. And it's about using the symmetric component, which is AND, with an asymmetric motivation. So the idea is that we think of one input as an address signal that says whether we want the data signal. That's the input to the other component. So the output is going to be uh, given by this logic. If the address is true, then we want the data. If the address is false, then we don't want the data and we're going to get the zero. And let's look. This is the familiar truth table for AND, but coloured in more suggestively. If the address is zero, out comes zero. If the address is one, out comes the data. So this is the way we can switch a data flow on and off. Now, each of these circuits that you got from the coin flips uses this AND trick twice with opposite address logic given by this NOT. So the left AND kicks in if A is zero, and the right AND uh, kicks in if A is one. And this OR combines the two results from the two ANDs, and we know that one of them is going to be a harmless zero, and the other one is going to be the signal we want. So what we have is a circuit whose logic uses A to choose between the F signal if A is false and the T signal if A is true. And in the heads heads circuit, you can see that plugged into F is an equality test for the other two inputs. And for uh, T, we have an XOR computation on the other two inputs. And that's reflected in the truth table. In the truth tables, in each case, split into two halves. If A is zero, then we get exactly the equality test of B and C. If A is one, we get exactly the XOR of B and C. The A is being used to choose between an equality test and an XOR. For heads, tails, exactly the same thing is going on. Only we're choosing between an XOR and an equality test. So it's the other way up this time. The top half looks like XOR and the bottom half looks like an equality test. Moving along to tails heads, you can see that this time we are choosing between AND and OR. So the top half of the truth table looks like AND and the bottom half looks like OR. And then finally for tails tails, the top half is coming from an AND and the bottom half is coming from XOR. So again, the same use of ANDs to switch things on and off is giving us a circuit that now switches between two signals. Let's actually think about what these things do. Heads heads tells us if we are getting an even number of ones. You can see no ones, two ones, two ones, two ones. Heads tails is telling us if we have an odd number of ones. You can see we have one one, one one, one one, three ones. Meanwhile, this thing, choosing between and and or, is giving us the majority vote of the three inputs. If A says no, both B and C must say yes. If A says one, if A says yes, it's enough for either B or C to say yes. And if they all say yes, so much the better. Meanwhile, swapping out that OR for an XOR gives us a circuit that tells us if exactly two of the inputs are ones. So you can see 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. OK, so what was that MUX business? Well, the idea is that given that the uh, addressing logic and the, the choice setup 
is the same for all four of these circuits, we might as well pull out this common useful component as a thing that we have handy in its own right. So that's to say we extend the F and T wires up to the inputs. And uh, that gives us this MUX whose truth table has the property that when A is zero, the output is the same as F. When A is one, the output is the same as T. So all we're doing is switching between which of two signals we would like to receive. And then we can use MUX, just plugging in our choices of components to make all of these circuits without repeating the same address logic every time. So that's where MUX comes from. It's an extremely useful circuit that uses this technique, which is called AND masking. We think of the data as being masked by the address. We get the data only if the address says we want it. And then MUX uses two AND masks with an OR, an opposite addressing logic to act as a switch between two other signals into which we can plug whatever we like. Once more with syrup. Here I've got, for example, tails heads defined as the lab instructions gave you. And I've got my experiments for and and or and tails heads. And you can see that and is a lot like the top half of the truth table and that or is a lot like the bottom half of the truth table. Now, let's turn this into the MUX version. What I'm going to do is to copy that declaration down to here, chopping off the logic for the addressing with the definition of F and T. Then I'm going to modify this to be MUX. And just give F and T directly as the inputs. And now I can say that tails heads is given by MUX A, F and T, where F and T are computed the same way as before. I'm going to add a little experiment MUX there. And I'll get rid of the other two to save space. Let's hit send and see what happens. So MUX is defined and we can see that when A is zero, Z is F. And when A is one, Z is T. And then plugging our same AND and OR gates into the F and T inputs, we're getting the same as before. We've just chopped up our definition into the general purpose MUX and the specific example where we use it for AND and OR. I can even collapse it a little further just by substituting out the equations. Then I can get rid of the WHERE clause entirely. Let's hit SEND. Once again, top half looks like AND, bottom half looks like OR. 